The opening scene begins with a large group of school children racing to a nearby candy store, where the owner gives them various types of candies. Everyone is seen trying different candies except for a boy named Charlie, who stands outside the store and observes the other children. Charlie cannot afford the candies because he comes from a poor family. It is then shown that Charlie works as a paper delivery boy and lives with his widowed mother and both sets of grandparents, all of whom have been bedridden for 20 years. One of his grandfathers, Grandpa Joe, claims that as soon as he regains his strength, he will assist his family with their financial situation. However, he hasn't set foot on the floor in 20 years. Because of their poor economic situation, they have to feed on cabbage water. One day, Charlie receives his first paycheck and brings a loaf of bread home to eat with the cabbage water. He also decides that he will now pay for Grandpa Joe's tobacco. The same night, Charlie and Grandpa Joe discuss the Wonka Chocolate Factory. According to Grandpa Joe, Willy Wonka's competitors used to send spies into the chocolate factory in order to steal Wonka's secret candy recipe, so Wonka locked the factory and disappeared. Three years later, the factory reopened, producing more delicious candies than ever before. But currently, the gates remained closed, preventing anyone from entering or exiting the factory. The next day, Charlie is in class when a student interrupts to inform that Willy Wonka is allowing five lucky people to tour his chocolate factory. According to the news, Willy Wonka has hidden five golden tickets in Wonka candy bars, and the lucky ones will receive an opportunity to tour his factory as well as a lifetime supply of chocolates. Following this, the entire world begins purchasing Wonka chocolate bars in the hopes of finding the golden ticket. Despite the fact that Charlie's family cannot afford the chocolates, Charlie is optimistic that he will find a golden ticket. Among the five golden tickets, the first one is discovered by the son of a prominent butcher named Augustus Gloop. Following this, a man with a scar on his face approaches Augustus and whispers in his ear. The man is revealed to be Wonka's chocolate factory's rival. The next day, Charlie celebrates his birthday, and his grandmothers give him a hand-knitted scarf as a birthday gift. Grandpa Joe buys him a Wonka chocolate bar in hopes of finding the golden ticket, but unfortunately, there's nothing inside. On the other hand, we're introduced to a spoiled girl named Veruca Salt, whose father owns a nut company. Mr. Salt closes his entire factory for a week and makes his workers search for the golden ticket as per his daughter's wish. After unpacking thousands of Wonka chocolate bars, one of his workers finds a golden ticket and hands it to Veruca. Surprisingly, the same scarred man approaches her and whispers to her. According to reports, the third ticket has been found by an American girl named Violet Beauregard, who holds the world record for chewing the same gum for three months. Violet claims that when she learned about the golden tickets, she stopped chewing the gum and switched to candy which resulted in her winning the golden ticket. After that, the same man approaches and whispers to her as well. Later in the evening, Charlie decides to walk back home with his mother, who works as a laundry woman. His mother appears to have a lot of laundry to do, so she tells Charlie to get going. Before departing, Charlie informs her about the third golden ticket and expresses that he wants it more than anyone else. When his mother hears this, she tells him to expect the least because there are billions of people in the world and only five of them will receive the golden ticket. She also claims that once this is over, he will be no different from the billions of others who did not find the ticket. Despite this, Charlie appears worried because there are only two tickets left in the world. The next day, the fourth golden ticket is discovered in Marble Falls, Arizona by a boy named Mike TV, who spends a lot of time watching television. The same night, Grandpa Joe uses his tobacco money to buy another Wonka chocolate bar, which he shares with Charlie. However, they're again disappointed when they find it empty. Elsewhere, we see an auctioneer conducting an auction for the last case of Wonka chocolate bars in the United Kingdom. One of the bidders named Harold successfully purchases it for the highest price of 5,000 pounds. The same night, Harold is kidnapped, and the kidnapper calls his wife to demand a case of Wonka bars in exchange for Harold's life. 
Later, the final golden ticket is found by a multi-millionaire owner of the South American gambling casinos named Alberto Minaletta. As Charlie hears this news, he is heartbroken and sobs. The next day, Charlie is walking home from school when he comes across a coin dropped on the way. Without thinking twice, he grabs the coin, goes to the local candy store, and buys two Wonka chocolate bars. As he walks out of the store, he notices a crowd in the newspaper stall. Charlie walks over to the stall to see what's going on, and discovers that Alberto Minaletta made up a bogus ticket, implying that there's still one ticket floating around the world. After learning this, Charlie hurriedly opens the Wonka bars one last time, hoping to find the golden ticket inside. Surprisingly, this time he finds the golden ticket and gets overjoyed. Charlie then rushes home to share the good news, but on his way, he is stopped by the same man with the scar. The man introduces himself as Arthur Slugworth and informs him about Wonka's new everlasting gobstopper invention. Arthur offers him 10,000 pounds in exchange for bringing one everlasting gobstopper so he can find out Wonka's secret formula. After this, Charlie heads home and informs his family of the news. Grandpa Joe goes through the ticket, which states that the winner may bring one member of their family. Hearing this, the little boy immediately invites his grandpa, so the latter asks for assistance in getting out of bed. To everyone's surprise, Grandpa Joe is able to get back on his feet, causing him to sing and dance in joy. The next day, people gather outside Wonka's chocolate factory to catch a glimpse of the eccentric Willy Wonka. He appears at exactly 10 a.m. and greets all five winners. After that, he invites the winners and their parents inside the factory. At first, he makes all the children sign a contract that releases him from any liability. The parents are hesitant to let their children sign it, but Grandpa Joe is completely fine with it. Then, Willy Wonka leads them to the nerve center of the chocolate factory, where everything is edible. Upon reaching there, they discover a chocolate river and a chocolate waterfall. They also notice that the factory workers are actually the Oompa Loompas from Loompa Land. Willy Wonka claims that he transported helpless Oompa Loompas to work in his chocolate factory safely and peacefully. Shortly after, Augustus goes to the chocolate river and begins drinking it. Unfortunately, he falls into the river and gets sucked up into a pipe leading to the fudge room. When Willy Wonka notices this, he orders one of the Oompa Loompas to direct Augustus's mother to the fudge room. He then leads them to a boat and sails it across the chocolate river. Soon, the boat enters a tunnel and begins to speed up, terrifying everyone on board. Eventually, they come across an invention room, where Willy Wonka performs all of his secret inventions. Upon heading inside, he displays his various inventions, including the machine that produces Everlasting Gobstopper. He claims that the Everlasting Gobstopper will never shrink, and that one can suck them indefinitely. Before giving the Everlasting Gobstopper to them, Willy Wonka warns them to not show it to anyone else. Following this, he introduces them to a special gum that tastes like a three-course meal. Violet snatches the gum, eats it, and soon transforms into a blueberry. Because of this, Willy Wonka once again summons the Oompa Loompas and orders them to take Violet to the juicing room in order to get her squeezed. In the next scene, Willy Wonka takes everyone to the lickable wallpaper, where they can get the exact taste of the fruits from its pictures. Then he introduces them to fizzy lifting drinks, which can lift people like a balloon. Willie forbids everyone from drinking it, but despite this, Grandpa Joe and Charlie decide to try it. As a result, they begin to fly upwards. At first, they have a fun time and enjoy themselves, but when they are unable to get down, they start panicking. However, they soon realize that burping can make them fly downwards. Shortly after, Willy Wonka shows them the geese that lay golden eggs. This mesmerizes little Veruca, so she demands a goose and its golden egg. However, Willy Wonka refuses to sell it. Hearing this, Veruca begins to throw a tantrum, but in the process, she accidentally steps on the egg indicator, causing her to fall into the furnace. Worried, Veruca's father also follows her and jumps into the furnace. 
Their factory tour also includes a car ride that takes them to another invention of Willy Wonka. He shows them Wonka Vision, which transmits a large chocolate bar and beams it into someone's television. Mike is intrigued, so he decides to use the machine on himself, transforming him into a miniature version of himself. In order to regain his original size, Willy Wonka orders the Oompa Loompas to send him to the taffy pulling room. After this, he declares that the tour is over, leaving Charlie and Grandpa Joe as the only two survivors. Grandpa Joe asks for the rewards, but Willy Wonka dismisses them, claiming that he's too busy. He also mentions that they will not receive a lifetime supply of chocolates because they stole some fizzy lifting drinks. This enrages Grandpa Joe, and as a result, he suggests that Charlie hand over the everlasting gobstopper to Arthur. However, Charlie is so loyal and honest that he returns the everlasting gobstopper to Willy Wonka before leaving. Surprisingly, this act of kindness impresses Willy, so he informs Charlie that he has won the jackpot. In the next scene, he introduces Charlie to Mr. Wilkinson, who happens to be none other than Arthur. Willy Wonka reveals that Arthur works for him, and he just tested Charlie, in which he has passed. Soon after, Willy Wonka takes Grandpa Joe and Charlie to the wonka Vader, from which they can see the entire town. Then he hands over his entire chocolate factory to Charlie, allowing the boy's family to move in. Furthermore, Wonka claims that he devised this entire plan just to find an honest, loving child to whom he can reveal all his precious candy-making secrets. The movie ends as Charlie finally receives what he had desired from the start, and lives happily ever after.